Hey guys, welcome to Tristan Free Reviews. Today we'll be talking about a little board game based on The Hobbit. The Hobbit is a game for two to five players and it is super fun. I love The Hobbit and, and this is just a really, really fun game. Let's get into it. Alright, so first things first, you want to take that big old bit off. Get the instructions out of the way. And move the board off to the box and move the box off to the side. So I'm going to be setting up for a four player game today because that is my preferred method for showing how to play. So then what you're going to do next is deal one player board to every player. box now. Take out little gems, open that baggie up, and spread them all about. There we go, luscious. Alright, and last but not least, you're just going to dump those little babies out, and put one at the number two spot of every section. number two spot. Now the colors represent different things that you'll get along the way and you'll need to roll different uh, saves and whatnot. Like there's courage, cunning, strength and those are the three things. Basically the overall goal of the game is to get to small before he gets to Lake Town and have a raucous time by the... Oh, right. Once everyone has their pegs, you can put those back in the baggie. Alright. Then, next to room is the action dice and the green marker. Action dice will come in during the final phase when you're fighting the big baddie. The ring token will come in when you land on the ring token, obviously. Now, the dwarf cards come out. I'm just going to put those there for now. Schmog tokens. We're going to put those right here, out of the way. And then we're going to put this big ass dragon over there, at the smog starting spot and this little baby hobbit at the back end. Now, get the event and adventure cards out. And put them down for now. These will come in when you reach the four adventure pieces. Just separate the adventure the event in the little piles like so. Then place them up above the map in numeric order, obviously. Now take the dwarf cards, shuffle these little babies up a bit. And then deal five to each player. And put those cards back down. Now, once everyone has gotten their cards, their player sheets, and all the things have been separated properly, now 
you are ready to play the game. Let's get a good look at this player board so you can understand. So, how the player board works is this is courage, this is cunning, and this is strength. As you move up the tracker, you get certain benefits. Like that's an already existing shield. So if I needed to roll five shields, I already have one shield prepared. So that is what those do. This gives you more die roll. This gives you more attack. Pretty simple. Also, the higher you get, the hot and the more treasure you get at the end. But you also get treasure from battling the goons. So now that you have an understanding of that, let's pull out. Yeah, there we are. And look over at little baby bitch Bilbo. Yeah, there he is. Hello, Bilbo. Alright, first things first though, I'm going to show you guys these dwarf cards. See how they're numbered like so? Oh, there's Morning Mert. The lower number gets the first space. So as you see over here, that's two Lumbus Bread, two Strike, two Cunning, two Wisdom, so on. So you'll get certain little points for that. Also, I'm a goon. And I forgot to break out that sweet, sweet Lumbus bread. So forgive me, God, for I have not fed my children. There are also these little Lumbus bread tokens. Yeah, they just give you uh, some things in the future will require Lumbus. And you can get them on the die, like so, or you can get them by eating some mad Lumbus. Now we got some Lumbus. Also, you're supposed to give two to each player, but I didn't do that, so just add that in when you're doing shit. Cool. All right, so now, everyone selects a card from the hand, like so. Remember, you want, depending on what you want, you want to accurately place it so that you can either get Lumbus, Strength, Cunning, or wisdom. So, we're just gonna play some cards real quick. Alright, once everyone has played their cards, now we reveal them all. So, this player number two played a nine, player number one played a 20, player number three played 16, and player number four played 28. So, this is how this works. Player number nine moves Bilbo one, so he receives two Lumbus Bread tokens, as indicated by the picture. Next goes Player number three. Player number three gets two strength, so his strength gets moved up the board. So now he has two axes for attack instead of one. Player number one gets two cunning, so his track moves up two. And last but not least, player number four gets two wisdom. And there we are. So, play basically goes like that, playing cards, but each round you also must reveal an event. Event cards are rather sweet. The Trolls Cache. Each player may give two Lumbus to receive one Cunning. That's a pretty good deal. So, let's say this player over here who's rich in that Lumbus is like, yeah, I could use some smarts. So, he eats some Lumbus and gains some knowledge, just like the real world. No one else decides to go with that though. So now this just gets discarded face up. Same thing with the used uh, dwarf cards. 
everyone also gets a new dwarf card. And as I said, play continues until Bilbo Baggins reaches the next little baby man, which is the first adventure. Also, event cards, you play till you run out of them and you get to the adventure section of the game. So, once you're at this section here, the player with the highest intellect goes. So, for easy example's sake, let us say that it is player one right here. So, he gained up to there, and now he is faced with the first adventure. This is how the adventure cards are laid out. Fight the goblin hordes. You must have one defense and four damage. So, you need to roll these dice, and player number one has two reroll opportunities, so we can reroll two dice. All right, so he got four axes, and he already has one shield for being so knowledgeable. That's rather nice of him. So he has defeated the goblin hordes, and he gains two jewels. Ain't that sweet. Now, just like the other cards, that goes into the discard pile. And now, the player to his left draws one. Pay three Lumbus. Ah, shit, that's a shame. He has had some Lumbus. Well, hopefully he can get some in a roll. Oh, well, he only got one, but he's gonna pay two to not need that Lumbus no more. So he gets one treasure from that. And that's how the game works. Players go around the map, doing adventures, going and having events throughout the lands. One of the things I did not cover, however, is the smog tokens. Let's say, for example, this player right here, player number two, could not have paid the Lumbus that he needed to. Well, that would have been a mad shame, and one of these tokens would have been drawn. Active player loses one attack and one Lumbus. He has no Lumbus to lose. He loses that attack if he failed it. Some cards, however, though, have smog move a space. If smog if smog moves all the way down to Lake Town before Bilbo Baggins gets to him, then the game is instantly over. And you have lost. Thank you guys very much for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Moni Mert says goodbye.